And I also think there's something dangerous about writers' units where um, just the process, I find the process of writing is just so personal. And it's so, you're just, you're not, you're so struggling to just figure out something that's just uh, the secret that's inside of you that you're trying to like solve or this mystery. And if you get into a sort of talking with a group about, you know, plot structure or your, you know, what your character's like or whatever, it sort of makes it this committee of like play construction. I just, I find it, I don't know, I find it dangerous. What do you think? Uh, well, I mean, I've been through a lot of that. I mean, it, you know, back in the early days of Banff where they let the actors say whatever they wanted to about the play, it was horrifying. I mean, it was horrifying the way writers were treated and the things that were said about them. Mm -hmm. And if we had said those things to the actors about their performances, there would have been a, and that's always been kind of my bugaboo in the theater. If, if we spoke to directors, designers, or actors the way they speak to writers, they would all leave the fucking theater. They mm -hmm. would be gone. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, uh, for example, um, that first playwrights group, Urjo aside, everybody was really intelligent and committed and read one another's work, and there wasn't a, a kind of judgment, there was a kind of support, so mm -hmm. I think it depends on the writer's group you're in and who's running it. I mean, I do, I do a lot of uh, work with young playwrights and young dramatists, or new, new not necessarily young, mm -hmm. uh, in a room, and I find it really helpful to get them all together and talk about their process and what they do. I think it's dangerous to get sort of too uh, personal and kind of precious about what I'm doing, especially if you're a dramatist. If you're a poet or a, or a, a prose writer, that's a different thing, but when you're writing things that have to be shared with other people, that that is your objective, is other people are going to take this material and take it to a whole new level. They're not just going to read it and interpret it in their brain, they're actually going to live it. Uh, that you have to learn to be tough. You have to learn to listen to other people, but you have to learn to also stick to your guns when you think you have to stick to your guns, because not everything everyone says is helpful or true or necessary. You know, do you and have hard to figure out. Do you have a lot of drama? Uh, do you have your own personal dramaturge? I've worked with a lot of dramaturges over the years. Some very yeah. good ones, some very bad ones. I've worked with ones who have been really good on the plays they like. Mm -hmm and really horrible on the plays they don't like. And yeah. I think the, the real test of a dramaturge is how do you deal with the stuff you don't respond to as well as the stuff you do? How do you make that better? How do you help those writers? And I think a lot of dramaturges don't know how to do that. What's the stupidest thing a dramaturge has said to you? Can you think of one thing? Like, like yeah, sure, about poor Superman. Mm -hmm. He said, do you need the Superman stuff? <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Love and Human yeah. Remains, you know, mm, yeah, one yeah. of the first notes was, do you have to have the serial killer? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's no, I don't, but if I do, it's just a stupid fucking play like everyone else is writing in the world, you yeah. know? So I guess the answer is actually, yes, I do need the, the serial killer. I yeah, do yeah. need the Superman. It's like, does Hamlet have to be sad? Yeah, he, exactly. You know, just, you know. Is that, but I mean, a part of what we have to do as writers is we have to learn to sift through those kind of comments because they're always going to be there. I mean, mm -hmm. people, everyone thinks they can write because they can write. Yeah. Uh, and because they don't actually do it. So mm -hmm. they, they, they all have all kinds of advice and all kinds of um, uh, observations and all kinds of things they want to say to you. And I, I like to hear those things now because I, I can tell what's bullshit and what's mm -hmm. not. I can tell what I can use and what's not. And because I was exposed to so much of it so young, I got very good at figuring that out. So I don't even get resentful when people make stupid, uh, give you stupid notes anymore. And believe me, when you work in TV and film, mm -hmm. it is nothing but stupid notes. Oh. I mean, the theater is heaven <laughs> for writers compared to working in film and television and the kind of notes you get there. Oh, we'll get to that. Oh, yeah. Um, the thing I love about a good dramaturge is that they're just, uh, you can tell that they're invested. You, could, you know, they may not be the director, they may not be the actor or whatever, because actors and directors, they're just invested. The actors want to make sure they don't suck. Mm -hmm. And directors want to make sure that, you know, uh, they don't suck. But uh, a good dramaturge also, yeah, I can just tell that that person is just, just as much invested in seeing it work and seeing it come together. And, uh, oh, yeah. absolutely. I mean, that's what Iris was great at, because Iris understood that we all had individual voices. So mm -hmm. when Iris Turcotte worked with Daniel McIver or she worked with Ronnie mm -hmm. Burkett, it wasn't the same as when she worked with me. We, yeah. She worked with all of us in very different ways mm -hmm. and very different fashions and all of the other people she worked with. And also, she treated each project like an individual project. That it didn't, she didn't carry stuff from your last mm -hmm. play or the play you might be writing in the future into it. She let it be what it was and what it wanted to be and helped you find that. And that can be a very hard thing for a writer to find. Mm -hmm. 